Hello and welcome back. This is the third out of four videos about section 3.1 and in this video we will learn how to estimate a probability using Monte Carlo estimation. In this case we use a very simple trick. Namely the trick is to introduce something which is called the indicator function and this indicator function that is normally written as a one with a double bar or maybe bold in print and that is defined as one if x is in a given set a normally you can write the a here and zero if x is not in a the reason that function is interesting is that when we compute the expectation of the indicator function of a random variable something good happens so let's try that if we use this definition the expectation of the indicator function applied to a random variable capital x is now how do we compute this? The indicator function takes only two values, 0 and 1. So that is a discrete random variable. And at the beginning of this section we learned how to do that. Let's just go back. The discrete case on the top of this page, we sum over all possible values and multiply with the probability of getting this value. So how do we do that here? The possible values are 0 times probability of indicator function of x being equal to 0 plus 1 times the probability of the indicator function of x being equal to 1. And well, first the first term, it seems clear we can remove this because it's multiplied with 0, so we don't need to worry about this probability. And for the second term, 1 times something is just something, so we don't need the 1. And the indicator function being 1, we can look that up on top. The indicator function equals 1 if x equals a. So what we get is just the probability of x being in a. And as we did it before, we can rewrite that equation by just swapping left and right. What we get is the probability of x being in a set A equals the expectation of the indicator function of x. And now using what we have just learned, that is an expectation of a function of x. So what we can do is we can approximate this using the Monte Carlo estimate, which is sum j from 1 to n, the whole sum divided by n of f of xj, and in this case f is the indicator function, so we write the indicator function of xj. And if you look at the sum, we know the indicator function is 1 if x is in a, so indicator function of xj is 1 if xj is in a. So the sum counts 1 every time xj is in a, so that counts just how many of the xj are in a. So the sum is the proportion of xj which are in a. So intuitively that makes sense. And everything we are going to learn about Monte Carlo estimates for expectations via this relation will also apply to probabilities. So we cannot do two things. We can compute or estimate expectations and using what I've just written we can estimate probabilities. Again I'm just giving you a short demonstration of that in R. So to demonstrate this, we just need to pick a set and we need to pick an x. Here what we do is assume x is n01, standard normal distributed, and the set a, say, we take the interval from 1 to 2. Of course, that example is simple enough that we can actually get the exact answer if we want to. So we can use that fact to check. Let's pretend for now we don't know the answer. So how would we go about that? First. We need to pick our n, and here, let's say we take a million again. I use this exponential notation, that means 1 times 10 to the 6, that's a million. Then we generate our random samples, r norm n, and I want standard normal distributed values, so I don't need to write mean and variance because they default to 0 and 1. And now we need this indicator function. What we need is a 1 if x is in the interval a and a 0 else. And there are different ways of doing that. Let's do the naive way. So f of x, let's call that s. So the naive way would you be to use the if else function. With if else, you can first write a condition. So let's say x is greater or equal 1 
and x is less than or equal to 2. And then we get to say which value do we want if the condition is true. We want the 1 for the indicator function. And then we get to say which value do we want if the condition is false. 0. Let's try that out. n is a million. x is large numeric. It doesn't show us values. And f of x I have mistyped. And that is something which will happen to you too. If you use R, even if you have some experience, you will occasionally make mistakes and R gives you error messages. It is important to learn to understand these and fix these errors. So here it says object X not found. And the clue is somewhat hidden, but if you look carefully, you see that it's a lowercase x and our random variables are capital X, so I must have typed lowercase x somewhere, and in fact I did, here it is. So we fix this error by placing lowercase x with capital X. Let's try that. Again, it does not show us values because there are too many, so let's just look at the first 10. So x, 1 to 10. That is our first 10 random values, and we see, for example, the first one is in the interval, the second one is not. So f of x, 1 to 10. It works out. The first value is the 1, so it goes with 1.59 being in the interval. The second value is the 0, that goes with minus 0.33 not being in the interval. And it claims none of the remaining values is in this interval, and if you look when you are negative, that seems to work out. Okay, what we should do is we should just take the average of this, so in mathematical notation, or f of xj, and f of x1 would be that, f of x2 would be that, f of x3 would be that. But the average in R you can just write mean, so we do mean f of x and get our answer as 0.136141. As before, that result is random, so if I run it again I get a different value, but n is large so it will not be very different. You see I always get 0.13 and then something 5 or 6. I mentioned at the beginning here we know the exact answer. Let's see how we do that. We can get the exact value of that probability using the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution. We can type p norm 2, say, for getting the probability that a standard normal distributed random variable is less than 2. And that's not quite what we want. We want it to be being between 1 and 2, but we can get our answer by subtracting the probability of being less than 1. So the exact answer is 0.1359. So that is the theoretically correct result. And let's try out our estimate again. Our estimate was 0.135 something, and you see these are really, really close. So the method indeed works. This concludes the third video. In the next video, we will learn how to estimate the value of an integral using Monte Carlo estimation.